Lord. Therefore, Father, we, we've come together this morning to lift up your name, to exalt you and to glorify you, for you are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. You are still the Christ. You are still the Messiah this morning. And therefore we say, Father, take preeminence in our lives. Take center stage. Continue to be who you have been even in the past, Father. In Jesus' name, for your word declares you are the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Therefore, Father, be glorified. And we thank you for your faithfulness in our lives. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your provision. We thank you for the joy of the Lord that is our strength. We thank you for the peace that we have, Father, in Jesus' mighty name today. And we commit this word and prayer to you. And I thank you, Father, that today you will speak to your people. You will enlighten the eyes of our understanding this morning. I pray for revelation. I pray for the understanding of the word of God this morning. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Somebody comment, amen. Shout amen if you can this morning, wherever you're watching from. Maybe you're in your bedroom, on your couch, or you're driving to work. Just shout amen. Give Jesus a, a, a great shout of amen. And even as you shout this morning, every wall of Jericho in your life falls down in the name of Jesus. Mm. Praise the Lord. I hope you got your coffee as well with you this morning. Praise the Lord. Uh, my dear brother, Brother Jeff, thank you for joining this morning. Cheryl Ann, uh, bless you, bless you, bless you. Uh, Cheryl Ann, uh, Nelly Naidu, thank you so much for making time for the Lord here this morning. Hallelujah. I hope you guys are expectant here this morning. We're going to be talking about conflict, conflict. And many a times, you know, as believers, when we hear uh, words such as conflict, we, 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 we're trying to shy away from such topics, you know. Um, but it is necessary sometimes to face certain things in the eyes, deal with them. The English always say you must take the bull by its horns. Therefore, today we're going to be talking about conflict, but this conflict, it is between two kingdoms, the kingdom of God and the kingdom of the devil, the kingdom of Satan. So we're going to be talking some real truth here this morning, and I pray that the Holy Spirit will really open up our eyes to see what is happening in the days that we are living in. We shouldn't take anything for granted. We shouldn't take anything lightly in the days that we are living in. So therefore, I really pray that this morning, uh, the Holy Ghost will remove the scales off of our eyes. You know, the wool that the enemy wants to put over our eyes. I pray today that the Holy Ghost will remove the scales that have been put over God's children in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So by way of starting, if you, if you are a Bible reader, which you ought to be doing, you ought to be reading the Bible because we, we, in the past few days, I've been talking about this scripture where Jesus said, you, we, we must continue in the scriptures. He said, if, if you continue in my teachings, only then you are my disciples. I call you my disciples when you continue in my teachings. And the Bible continues to say, then you will know the truth and the truth shall set you free. So I will always maintain that the truth is found in the word of God. Therefore, if you read the whole of First Peter, the book of First Peter, all the chapters of First Peter, Peter is giving us a warning. Peter is telling us what is to come in the last days, what is to come in the end times. So it is important as children of God to know the season that we are in, the season that we are living in right now. Go and read the book of First Peter, even Second Peter. You know, I, I just love how God works. God always gives us, you know, the end from the beginning. He always tells us what to come. But it is important that we prepare ourselves for what is happening right now in the times we are living in. Therefore, I want to say that even, even as God has prepared us, even as God has given us the truth from his word, it is up to us to apply the truth of God's word. It is entirely up to us. 
the reality is we are in a battle. The, the Bible speaks in the book of uh, Ephesians chapter 6. Go and read Ephesians chapter 6. The Bible speaks of a spiritual battle, a spiritual warfare that is taking place. You see, we are living uh, in, in a world in a visible world where we can see what is happening in the natural. But there is also another world, an unseen world, where there is a battle between the kingdom of God and the kingdom of Satan, the invisible world. But I want you to know this morning that this invisible world is influencing our visible world, whether we like it or not. If you go and read in the book of Daniel chapter 10, one of my favorite scriptures, Daniel chapter 10. The Bible speaks of the prince of Persia. The prince of Persia is a spirit that held back the answer from, from Daniel. Although the Lord had already answered Daniel in the book of, jo of uh, Daniel chapter 10. The angel of the Lord appeared to Daniel and said the following to Daniel. Daniel, from day one that you prayed and fasted, the Lord released the answer to your prayer. But I want you to know that the, the, the spirit of Persia delayed the answer to, to, to your prayers. Although God had released it. We are talking about conflict in, in, between two kingdoms today. You see, God had already released the answer. But now the spirit which counteracted what Daniel was supposed to, to receive, the answer, the blessing that was due to Daniel was delayed by the spirit of Persia. But I love the revelation of the angel of God that says, Daniel, this is what is happening in the realm of the spirit. But I want you to know, as an angel of God, I am going back to fight. Go and read that scripture. The angel said, I am going back to do what? To fight. Meaning, there is a battle in this unseen world that we don't see with our 2020 vision. But the Bible also says, do not be ignorant of the devices of the enemy. As much as we are born again, as much as Jesus said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Do not be ignorant to the attacks of the enemy. Do not be ignorant to what the enemy wants to do. I can tell you this morning without a shadow of a doubt that what he wants to do is to take your faith away from Jesus. He wants you to, to have doubt in Jesus. He wants you to walk away from Jesus. He doesn't want you to have eternal life. That is the fight that we are fighting. Listen to what the Bible says uh, uh, in the book of James. Do not be friends with the, with the world. Do not be friends with the world. What, what, and, and I mentioned this last week already. I'm not saying let us not hang around the people that we are supposed to be influencing. We must be in the circles of the unbelievers for the uh, sole purpose of influencing them to come into the kingdom of God. But do not let the world overpower you and influence you to be part of them. Therefore, there is a thin line between a friend of the world and being part of the world. Do not be part of the world. Be amongst them to influence them for the kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. That means we have a lot of work to do. Because if you look outside what is happening now, in the days we're living now, it seems and it looks like the enemy is winning. It seems like God has forgotten about us. But God has not forgotten about us. He always has a plan. He al he's always working in the background. But we have a duty to pray. That's what Peter said. We must pray. We must be vigilant in the last days. Go and read First Peter. The book of First Peter. Peter said we must be watchful in prayer. We must be sober-minded in the times we are living in. Because if we are not sober-minded, we will not be able to discern what is coming from the enemy. We will not be able to discern what is good and what is evil. But if we are vigilant in prayer, we will be strengthened in the last days to stand against the vials of the enemy. Therefore, Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane, the only thing that kept him going, the only thing that kept Jesus going was prayer. He said, he said, nevertheless, Lord, I can see this cup of bitterness before me. But prayer kept him going. He said, nevertheless, let your will be done. Not my will, but let your will be done. 
That is powerful. That should keep us going in the last days. Prayer must never be an option. Prayer must not be something that is left for, for only when we are going through tough times. Even now, before things get worse, we must be people that are rooted in prayer. In the name of Jesus, be sober-minded, beloved. The enemy is out to kill us, to destroy us. According to the book of John 10, chapter 10, he doesn't play games. He wants to annihilate you. He wants to make sure that you don't fulfill your purpose. You don't reach your destiny in the kingdom of God. But thank God for Jesus Christ who came and died for us and gave us life in its fullness. But we also are, are spiritual beings and we must put into practice the spiritual practices. That means worship. That means the reading of the word. That means prayer is the thing that we do on a daily basis to counteract the, 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 the acts of the kingdom of darkness. Hallelujah. So therefore this morning, take up your shield of, of faith and quench every fiery dart of the devil. Take up the sword of the spirit this morning. Put on your full armor. We want you to, to emerge as victors, not as victims. If you hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying here today, when you hear the Spirit of the Lord, you must be ready for war. What is the armor meant for? The armor is meant for war. You cannot just put on the armor for show, but it is for war. Take up your shield this morning. Take up the sword of the spirit. Put on the helmet of salvation. Put on the breastplate of righteousness. Put on the belt of truth this morning. Put on the shoes of the gospel this morning to wage war against the kingdom of Satan. The devil is nothing to play with. His plan has always been singular. It is to take you out. It is to take your faith away from Jesus Christ. Okay, so let's take it further here this morning. Let's take it further. The Bible says in the book of Colossians, Colossians chapter 1 verse 13. Colossians 1 verse 13. He has rescued us from the dominion of darkness, brought us into the kingdom of his beloved son, Jesus Christ. God has rescued us from the kingdom of darkness. And there's nothing good about darkness. There is absolutely nothing good about the kingdom of darkness. As Christians, we are living between two kingdoms. That is our reality. That is what we are doing every single day. We face the challenge of living as Christ's followers in an unholy, fallen world. Listen, we love our beloved country, South Africa. We love the nations of the world. But the reality is we are living in a fallen world. And our eyes must be, must be opened to that reality today. We are living in an, in an unfallen, rather in a fallen world. Don't take that for granted. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Listen to this. I love the Apostle Paul. Apostle Paul, uh, uh, um, he started, uh, uh, um, he speaks about his citizenship. He was a Roman citizen, but he's also uh, at the same time, he had a dual citizenship, a, a citizen of Rome, but also a citizen of the kingdom of God, a citizen of heaven. That's who Paul was. You see, he did not renounce his Roman citizenship, but he appealed to it when he was arrested for preaching the gospel. But Paul was a Christian first and foremost. As much as he was a citizen of this world, first and foremost, he was a citizen of the kingdom of heaven. That's why he made the statement that heaven is our home. We are pastors by in this world. I am saying to us today, do not fall for the temptations of the world. Do not conform to the standards of the world because heaven is our home. We are passing by. The temptations of this world, they will always seem appealing to us. They are appealing, but the aim is for you not to make it to heaven. 
If the devil can have you in his hand, he will not lose his grip over you. He wants you not to go to heaven. He wants to destroy you. That is his ultimate goal. But Paul said we are passers by. So don't let the temptations of this world grab a hold of you. Mighty God. Listen. Listen to this. Paul took an uh, uh, issue with Rome, with, with, which required citizens to revere Caesar as God. In those days, in Paul's days, you see the conflict between the two kingdoms. Man was meant to be God in the eyes of people. Caesar was supposed to be revered as God. But Paul had a problem with this. He had a problem with this. And he had to remind the people of God that Jesus was Lord and not Caesar. So don't bow down to the kingdom of this world. Don't bow down to the kingdom of Satan. You remember what happened in Babylon? We see the same imagery again where King Nebuchadnezzar, he, 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 he put up a golden statue and he wanted people to bow down to the kingdom of, of Babylon. That is just man. Man wants to be worshipped. But the devil comes in the form of man. He uses people just like you and I. But he says, bow down to them. But the three Hebrew boys, they said, oh king, we will not bow down. That should be our attitude this morning. We are citizens of heaven. We are followers of Jesus Christ. Therefore, we will not bow down to any anything in this world. We will not be tempted by anything that the devil tries to bring on a silver platter to us. The aim is to have a grip on you. Don't allow the temptations of this world. It is a temptation of Satan to pull you from the kingdom of heaven. But I love the Apostle Paul who had to remind the people, Caesar is not God. Jesus is Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the living God. Praise the living God. I feel this thing this morning. I feel it this morning. Here's, here's the reality. Here's the reality. We, we, we always get worked up even when it comes to the political climate in any country, in any nation. But I want you to know, our government is not our help. Our government will never rescue us from the grip of the enemy. Therefore, we got to recognize that our hope is not in the government. Our hope is not in any politician. They will always, they will always disappoint you. And I'm saying it publicly today. The government will disappoint you. But you know why? They are human. They are human. Our hope must not be in the, in the arms of flesh. But our hope must be in the Lord Jesus Christ. It is this kingdom of God that will rescue us in the times that we are living in. If I can take you back to the book of 1 Peter. Go and read 1 Peter again. Such a powerful book concerning what is happening now in the times we are, we are having now. We must be sober-minded, meaning we must be in, in, our, in our right mind. Therefore, if we are in our right mind, we will be able to make judgment in the soberness of our mind. Meaning, don't panic when you hear things in the political arena. Don't panic. God is in control. God has always been in control. The kingdom of darkness will never win. It will never win. Jesus has already won the battle. He died one Friday morning and the devil thought that he had Jesus Christ. But guess what? On Sunday morning, Jesus rose with all power and he's coming back again to defeat the devil and take power again away from him. But while we are waiting for Jesus to come back, be sober minded, be vigilant. Don't allow the enemy to cloud your judgment. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We need to under understand what scripture means by the word, the world. We need to understand what scripture says. It has three meanings in the Bible. The world means the created order. 
The world means a created order. We, we, we are living in a world that, that is being run by a system, a system of the devil. The devil is the king of this world. The Bible says God granted him that authority, but that authority is limited. Go and read the Bible. That authority is limited. We as children of God, we got to understand that God, the Bible says, he is El Shaddai, God Almighty. Satan's authority is limited. God has all power. So the, the, the world means three things. A created order, a human society ran by people, ran by people who want to oppress the children of God. The more we live according to the principles of the word of God, the more we will find backlash from the world. The more you preach the true gospel, the more people will come against you because they love this sugar-coated gospel. But that's why the Bible told us that in the last days, people will go and look for themselves and find teachers who will teach them what their itching ears want to hear. But the true gospel, put it aside. Don't tell us about the blood of Jesus. Don't tell us about the, the preaching of the cross. Don't tell us about holiness. People will come against you when you preach that gospel. But the Bible says in the last days, they will go and look for themselves. For teachers who preach this sugar-coated gospel. But it will not fly in the name of Jesus. We will continue to pursue and to preach the true gospel of Jesus Christ. Don't back down, beloved. There is power in the gospel of Jesus Christ. Jesus said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. To do what? To preach the gospel. Hallelujah. To cleanse the lepers. To cleanse, to heal. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is good this morning. God has all power. God has power even over this uh, created order, this created world that we are living in that is ran by the devil and those that are, are subject to his kingdom. But God has all power. Our power comes from God. Therefore, in a fallen world, we, we need to uphold the standards of God. That is a, a, a life of godliness, a life of righteousness. Praise the Lord. The Bible says in the book of Romans 12 verse 2, Do not be conformed to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of the mind. Hallelujah. Listen, the Philips translation puts it in this way. Do not let the world fit you into its mold. That is a powerful version. Go and read from the Philips uh, uh, version, the Philips translation. Do not let the world put you in its mold. Do not let the world shape how you think. Do not let the world shape how you live. But we must live according to the standards of God by the renewing of our minds. How do we renew our minds? Through the Bible, through the word of God. Our thinking pattern in this fallen world must be formed and shaped by the word of God, which is truth. The Bible says in the book of John, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. Therefore, God has power from the beginning up until now, even concerning your future. The word of God will prevail. The grass withers, the flowers fade, but the word of our God shall stand forever. Come on, earth will pass away, but the word of God will remain. So make sure you are rooted in the word of God. Build on firm foundation. Build on the word of God. Don't build on hearsay. Don't build on, on, on scripture only that you hear on Sunday. But be a builder. Be a person that reads the word every day for yourself. Therefore, the, the, the word of God will set you free. You will know the truth and the truth shall set you free. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Evangelist Doomsa says the sugar-coated gospel must fall. In the name of Jesus. Candy preaching must fall. Candy preaching must fall in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Listen, beloved. We need to guard against worldliness. 
We need to guard against worldliness. And we see how it has crept into the house of God now. Worldliness. It has crept in. We need to clean up. We need to clean up. The house of God must be holy, finished and clear. It is non-negotiable. It is a holy place. It is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Therefore, Holy Ghost, the Bible says we must not quench him. Do not quench the Holy Spirit. If we allow the things of the world to come into the church of God, to come into the body of Christ, we will suffer the consequences of that. That's why we get this compromised gospel. Because the world has crept in. We must watch against worldliness. What is worldliness? I've, men I've mentioned it to you. It is a created order. It is a world that is organized. It is a system that we have been put under. But don't fall under that, that, that organized system. It must not shape who we are. And I'll tell you why. Listen, first things first. We are all born again uh, people. We are all believers. We are Christians, I believe. All of us that are watching this morning. And sometimes we turn a blind eye even in the house of God about the things that are happening in the house of God. First of all, let's look at our praise teams in the church. People are dressed like the devil in the church. The praise team. People are wearing mini skirts. People are wearing tight fitting dresses. Who are you there? My God, I got to preach this thing this morning. Why are you on that stage dressed like that? That is the house of God. Listen, there are people who are still suffering in the church who are still under the influence of the devil, sitting in the benches of the church, and you have the audacity to come onto the stage, on that platform, to, to come with your miniskirt. There are people that will go back to the world, who have uh, 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 fleshly lust, people who haven't overcome sexual immorality. You, on that platform, you will take them down with that dress code. Come on, be modest in the house of God. Don't bring that type of, of, of dress code into the house of the Lord. Amen. Finish and clear. Evangelist is preaching the truth today. If you're going to be part of the way evangelistic church, you're going to dress modestly. You got to look like a, a woman of God. You got to look like a lady in the house of God. Likewise with the man, dress modestly. Now there's this, there's this thing with the, with the skinny jeans showing off all your, all your stuff to the public. No. Be a man and a woman of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My, my, my tablet is preaching to me right now. <laughs> my, my tablet is, pre is, preaching, is preaching to me right now. Now that it is sorted, Pastor Pinky. Thank you. Hallelujah. So therefore, beloved, let us not allow the world to creep in. We got to deal with those things of the world and clean them out in the house of God. In the name of Jesus. In the name, we must guard against the world. Therefore, even in our homes, let us train our children from a young age how, how, how to live a, a life that is pleasing for God. Train them while they're still young so that later on they will not defer. They will not be taken off from this way of godliness. But I love the word of God. The, the, the Bible says, God said, I will create a highway. It shall be called a highway of holiness. Hallelujah. Praise God. So even though the world is trying to creep into our lives as born again Christians, God once again is reaffirming us. I will create a highway. It shall be called a highway of holiness. And I want to encourage you this morning. Walk on this highway of holiness. It is the straight and the narrow road. Wide is the road to hell. Let us walk on the straight and the narrow road that will take us to heaven one day. But be because the world today is saying, listen, come here, come join us. Come and dabble with us. Come have a party with us. No, walk on the straight and the narrow. Christianity will cost you something. Christianity is all about a sacrifice. Take up your cross and follow me, said the Lord Jesus Christ. Carrying the cross is not an easy thing. Carrying the cross will cost you something in the kingdom of God. Are you willing to present your body as a living sacrifice unto the Lord? Holy and acceptable to the, are you willing to pay the price? That's what I posted on Facebook last week. We must be willing to pay a price 
for holy living. You must pay the price for Jesus Christ. You must pay a price for the kingdom of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. He's already paid the bigger price for you. He was hung on the cross. He was crucified. His blood was shed, but there was a purpose for the flowing of the blood of Jesus Christ so that our sins may be forgiven. Now we are forgiven. We have been made new. We have been made alive in Jesus Christ. Therefore, if any man is in Christ, he is a new creation in the name of Jesus. You are a new creature today. Don't be, uh, don't be formed and shaped by the world, yes. but be formed by the word of God. By the word of God. Hallelujah. Praise the living God. We're going to get into a time of prayer this morning. We're going to get into a time of prayer this morning. We're going to believe the Lord to do a one-time job in your life today. That if you are still a friend of the world, that today he brings an end to it. That you will be on this highway of holiness that the Bible speaks about. Walk through the straight and the narrow road. It will take you to heaven. It will take you to heaven. It is a guarantee. But the world presents so many things to us. Things that are very appealing. That's what the devil tried to do to Jesus Christ. If you bow down to me, I will give you all the kingdoms of this world. That same devil is tempting us today. Come this way. I will give you all these things. But stand your ground. Man shall not live by bread alone. But by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Stand your ground, beloved. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to pray for you, but pray for yourself as well. That God will deliver you today. God will deliver you from the plans of the enemy. The Bible says what the enemy has intended for evil. God will turn it around for your good. You know why? God is for you. God is not against you. Even though we sin, even though we fall, he remains faithful. He wants you in his kingdom. He wants to fellowship with you. He wants to see you one day. Spend eternity with him. Don't fall for the tricks of the world. Don't fall for, 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 for these things that the enemy wants to, to appease you and to appeal to you with. Walk on the straight and the narrow, but pray for yourself this morning. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Lebraria subra babasia, ketalabaria subrende bosia babaya, karababa shia la mandu, zdeketele bosia la baha, mandolo bosia brando. Come on, let's wage war. Let's wage war this morning. For this fight, this battle is not against flesh and blood, but it is against principalities and powers of darkness. Let us wage war this morning in the realm of the spirit and deal a death blow into the kingdom of the enemy. In the name of Jesus, as you pray in tongues this morning, you are launching missiles into the kingdom of darkness. You are confusing the enemy this morning in the name of Jesus. Reba sia la Maria sobrando, catala ba sambro bobo boshiye, reketa la ba sandala la bashiya, rakando boshiya mando, riba ba ba shekere re boshiya, ma brando lo boshi bre me me zende, zdekete le boshiya la ba 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 bashiya, abrondo ro boshekere re boshiya. Come on, pray with fervency. Pray with power this morning. Pray with fervency for the fervent prayers of a righteous man. They availeth much this morning in the name of Jesus. There is power in prayer this morning. Power to dismantle the powers of darkness. Power to dismantle the plans, the chains, the bondage of darkness over your life today. In the name of Jesus, I speak deliverance over you. I speak a, a newness of life over you today. In the name of Jesus, the Lord is setting you free. The Lord is setting you free from the plans of the enemy. From, from, from you having a relationship with the world today. In the name of Jesus, I speak holiness over your life. I speak righteousness. I speak up righteousness today. In the name of Jesus, a man and a woman of valor in the kingdom of God. So therefore, rise up today as a man and a woman of God. Take up your rightful place in the kingdom of God.
wage war in the kingdom of darkness today. You are a child of God. The Bible says uh, Jesus said all authority has been given unto him, but Jesus has given you delegated authority to trample upon every snake and every scorpion that wants to come against you today. In the name of Jesus, exercise that authority today. Exercise your faith today. In the name of Jesus, you have been filled with the Holy Ghost. You have the power Power to, to, to do things today that will transcend human limitation in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, Holy Ghost, I pray today for a fresh infilling, a fresh baptism today over your children in the name of Jesus. Cause us to know, Father, that you are with us until the end of the age in Jesus' name. Though the devil poses a threat upon our lives, upon our, upon our children, upon our finances, upon our families, our marriages. We know, Father, we will be victorious, for we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. We are more than conquerors. In the name of Jesus, we are overcomers in the kingdom of God. In Jesus' mighty name, the enemy is a defeated foe. He's already been defeated. Therefore, there is power in the blood of Jesus to deliver you today, to set you free from the clutches of the evil one, to set you free from the flames of hell this morning in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus father we bless you and we exalt you and we thank you today that you are doing a new thing you are doing a new thing in all of our lives today in the mighty name of Jesus in the mighty name of Jesus thank you for deliverance this morning thank you for setting us free thank you for life the Zoe life of God, abundant life in the lives of your people, in the mighty name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus. God is faithful. God is true. He will give you victory. He has given you victory. He said in his word, the battle is his and the victory is yours. You have the victory today. You don't have to be part of the world. You don't have to conform to the standards of the world. You operate from a place of victory today. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. I declare victory. I declare victory over your life today. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. In Jesus name. Victory. Victory in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Somebody just comment that for a second before we go this morning. Comment victory. Victory. We declare victory in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is faithful. God is good. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. We are victorious. We are victorious today. Remember, Jesus is coming back for a bride without spot, without blemish, without wrinkle. We will emerge victors. We will be victorious. Hallelujah. We are the bride. We are the bride. We will be spotless. So therefore, let us pursue righteousness. Let us pursue holiness. In the name of Jesus, may the Lord clothe you this morning with the robe of righteousness, with the robe of worship this morning. Hallelujah. Praise him for what he's doing in your life today. Praise him for turning your life around. Praise him for making sure that the plans of the devil will not prevail over your life today. In the name of Jesus. Victory in the name of Jesus. Victory in every area of your life. It belongs to you today. It belongs to you. You have victory in Jesus today. Victory in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 We too, Melissa's Jesus rose with all power to defeat the enemy again. Victory is us if we remain focused. Hallelujah. I agree with you. I agree with you, B2 Melo. Victory belongs to us. The devil is defeated. How are Peter and I declare victory over the plans of the enemy. Hallelujah. We are victorious this morning. We are victorious in the name of Jesus. And I declare victory again over this beautiful Tuesday. That nothing that the enemy is trying to, to, to put in front of you.
you will overcome it today. Be it in your workplace, whatever area, you will emerge victorious today. This Tuesday, it is a Tuesday that is made by the Lord. Therefore, we shall rejoice and be glad in this day. In the name of Jesus, you will walk in peace today. You will walk in the joy of the Lord. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Victory over every situation. Amen. Thank you, Sandra. Thank you, Sandra. Uh, wise man, Akim says true. Hallelujah. Thank you for joining the brother Akim. Family, I feel, I feel the, the, the presence of the Holy Spirit this morning. So powerful this morning. Even right there where you are. May the Holy Ghost saturate every fiber of your being today. May you be led and guided by the Holy Ghost today. The steps of a righteous man, they are ordered by the Lord. Allow him to lead and guide you today. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, I silence every voice of the enemy over your life today. Whatever lie he's trying to whisper into your mind today, I cancel and, 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 and I muzzle the enemy today. In the name of Jesus, the only voice you will hear is the still voice of the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Family, thank you for joining me this morning. What a powerful time we had in the presence of the Lord. And I believe today is going to be a great day. Today is going to be a day of victory. Even in your workplace, those that are still believing God for breakthrough in, in the area of employment, we declare victory. That job belongs to you in the name of Jesus. Every business person watching, we decree, we declare breakthrough in your business. In your business. May the Lord bless you and keep your business. We speak life over your business that it will not die, but it will live to proclaim the glory of the Lord. We speak salvation over our family members, those who do not know the, the Lord Jesus as their Lord and Savior. Your family members, your colleagues, we plead the blood of Jesus over them. We are calling them forth from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light, for we are the, the, the salt and the light in this world. Therefore, we must shine bright for Jesus and make sure that we influence many people to come into the kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Even right now, before we go, we pray for every person that is sick in their body. It might not be you, but we stand in the gap for everybody that is sick in their body. We speak the life of God. We speak the, 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 the healing power, the healing virtue of God to flow in their body right now and give them total restoration in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. And amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. What a beautiful time in the presence of the Lord. I love you with the love of Christ. Let us continue to love one another. Jesus said when we do that, the world will know that we are his disciples. I'm Evangelist Tabo, your favorite evangelist, together with my African queen, Pastor Pinky, serving in the background. We love you with the love of Christ. We will spot you tomorrow morning, 6 a.m. Don't miss out. Let's continue to dig into the word of the Lord and pray together. And remember, Sunday morning, 10 a.m. in our church building, that's where we gather. The Bible says, do not neglect the gathering of the saints. So be part of what God is doing in this season. Come to church Sunday morning, 10 a.m. as well as 5 p.m. Sunday evening. We are consecrating Sunday for the work of Christ. So see you tomorrow morning, 6 a.m. Have a wonderful day. God bless you. Mwah.